This is Bishop Nathan Kortu bringing to you from this studio. This will be our regular place of broadcasting. We want you to turn in today's uh, station. Again, is NCN TV. Uh, the discipleship program is a program that we have established to educate Christian, young Christian, uh, new people that are coming to the church. Uh, it will benefit you wherever you are to learn the scripture as we say the scripture. So we'll be giving, giving you more details as um, the time unfolds. But today we want to talk to you about what is a discipleship program is about. Uh, this is a program that is designed to help you to understand the Bible, uh, for you to understand the benefits of being a Christian and how to live an overcoming life as a Christian, how you can enjoy being a child of the living God. So the discipleship program is actually designed for you to understand the Bible and we are going to, we are going to give you some level in which you can read the Bible, you can study the Bible and you can search the Bible. And that's what we're going to be doing. Uh, this is not a theological discourse that we're going to be bringing to you. If need be, that's fine. But basically, it's for you to understand the basic foundation of the scripture as a child of God. So, like for instance, I'm going to be talking to, number one, I want to talk to you about uh, the matter of studying the word of God. You have, you have three ways that we have come out that you can understand the, way of me, the, uh, the Bible. Number one, you can read the Bible. Uh, as I said before, you can read this Bible just like any other book. You are not committing no sin just by reading it. Uh, in fact, we want you to do that daily. Take it, open it to any page, any chapter in the book, and get read it. Uh, it will help you. It won't hurt. So, but that's just a fundamental. Get reading the Bible. You might read the Bible, you don't even get any message from there, but at least you read it. Now, after that, we'll be talking about not only reading the Bible, but you can study the Bible. Uh, after you read the Bible, you can study the Bible. This is another level that now you are graduating from just reading. You are finding things that you want to look for in the Bible. Uh, how do you study the Bible? You can, for instance, you will, when you read what? You read a subject that is in the Bible. You read a statement. You read an uh, occasion. You read an event in the Bible. Now you can say, what is this here for? Uh, who is this for? Who wrote this? And what the occasion on which this was written? So now you are studying the Bible. Now you can see something in the New Testament. You say, you know what? This is in the New Testament. But where else can I find this information? Is it in the Old Testament? So that's why you are, you are not just reading it now. You are uh, studying it. So you can have one or two persons that you can ask, you can ask a pastor. Pastor, I came across this scripture. I didn't understand it. So you are now studying the Bible, which will be giving you more detail as we you continue to turn into our broadcast every week. Uh, we get, we'll be on 40 some of these things so you can really understand it. So the, we are talking about number one, reading the Bible. Number two, studying the Bible. Uh, then number three, you can search the scripture. Uh, the Bible says that those of Thessalonica were more noble in that they search the scripture daily. So you can search the scripture. That's the time now that you, you say, what do that mean to search the scripture? You can search the scripture by subject, by uh, uh, topics. Like for instance, I'm going to just take it. Let's say somebody wants to talk about salvation. Somebody tell you, somebody asks you, I'm a Christian. Uh, I want to understand what the plan of salvation is. Uh, like for instance, in the book of Acts chapter two, the Bible says when Peter spoke on the day of Pentecost, the Jewish people or those that were present that day when he spoke to them, he, they asked him. And the rest of the brethren, the Bible says, what should we do to be saved? Peter answered them right there in the Bible. So I'm saying that if somebody walked to me today, I said, Bishop, what must I do to be saved? There is no reason I should manufacture the answer. 
as you go to the Bible and find the answer that was given 2,000 years ago. That is, the plan of salvation starts with repentance. You have to repent of your sin. Not only that you repent of your sin. Now, watch this. When you search in the Bible, somebody might say, I don't know what repentance is. Does it mean I get feel sorry? Or does that mean what? So you're going to explain to them the word repentance is actually uh, a military term that means an above faith. So you're going to turn away from your sin, but it is not enough to turn away from your sin. When you turn away from your sin, you got to turn towards God, his grace, his mercy, his plan for you. So that's the time you can understand that I repented, I make an above face, but I walk towards God, I walk towards what he said I should do. Uh, so that's repentance. So you understand the, the, that scripture, then you find it from scripture. Where can I find this again? Throughout the scripture, the Bible says, except you repent, you should you will let what perish. So you start searching, you take that one topic, just repentance. You find it how it go throughout the scripture from the Old Testament to the New Testament. This is what we call searching the scripture to find out that this thing were so. So you search the scripture. Let's say you talk about redemption. You talk about the grace of God. This is one area that a lot of people misunderstand what grace is. People think that grace came to empower us to do whatever we can do. But grace is there to direct us to the plan of God. Grace is there to point out how can we be attached to our salvation? How can we enjoy the benefits? Uh, so grace did not just come as a freedom to do anything you want to do. If that's the way you're thinking, now when you go through other scripture, the book of Romans chapter 6 verse 1 says, Shall we continue in sin that grace you about? The apostle Paul used one of the stronger words. He said, God forbid. He didn't, not, he didn't just say no. He said, God forbid. Don't do this. So now we are searching the scripture, which is very, very important. So the discipleship program, we are going to take you step by step as to how to understand. The first focus is how to understand the Bible. Now, the next thing is going to be how to live as a Christian. Again, this is the one that we are, this is the plan we have. What do I do to continue? Now, watch this. There are two fundamental questions that the Bible, you have to find answer for in the Bible. Number one is, what must I do to be saved? But that's not all. After you are saved, the next question that you have to find answer to is, what must I do to remain saved? Right? So those are the things that we went to... Uh, we're going to take you from there. What must happen to be saved? You get the answer, repent and be baptized, or that you got it. But after that, what do I need to do to remain saved? That is, you have to keep walking with God. You have to have a new life. You have to have a, a commitment to the things of God. Uh, we recommend that you find a good church to join. We recommend that uh, you commit yourself to reading the Word of God daily. And that's what, uh, we, uh, and we can re recommend anything today for, to you. It's, we recommend that you turn into this studio, a ACN, you turn into listen to the broadcast that we'll be hearing because this is the bread of life we'll be giving to you. We will not hold anything back to you. I will speak to you like the Apostle uh, uh, Paul said in the book of I, uh, chapter 20. He said, I from house to house, I have we've heard nothing that was profitable unto you. I preach to you publicly. So this station, we will try our best. We will pray. We want you to join us in prayer. And not only that, we need your support. This broadcast needs to be going. We'll be appealing to you to support the broadcast. We'll be telling you more about it in the coming days. But this is going to be our regular time. We will be giving you again. This is a discipleship program from New Life Fellowship Church. And we are combining, with, uh, we are collaborating our effort with other Christian organizations for us to make this uh, station very valuable to you because the Word of God will be coming to you. Uh, we'll be studying after this, after we give you the discipleship program, after we know now that you, you have committed in reading the Bible, after you are committed in studying the Bible, after you are committed in 
section in the Bible, then we'll go from book to book. The theme of each book, we want you to know. That for instance, we take the book of Galatians, we take the book of Ephesians, we take the book of Isaac. So now in the Old Testament, we want you to be grounded in the Word. There's no substitute for it. If you're going to be a Christian, you need to know the Word. You remember in Luke chapter 4, when uh, the devil uh, was tempting Jesus, he rebuked the devil by the word. He said, it is written. And guess what? When they say it's written, not only on paper, it has to be written in your heart. If it's not written in your heart, and it's only written on this paper, then you will be thrown, you will be somewhere, you can't find this, you can't find the book, you can't find the paper. So, but when it's written on your heart, you can take it anywhere you go. In the Old Testament, this is what the Hebrew children used to do, the Shema. Hear ye Israel, the Lord our God is one God. That was to be on their necks. The Bible says that God commanded them it should be written on the table of their heart. That's exactly what the discipleship program went to be. We went to make sure that the word of God is written on the table of your heart. Because everywhere you go, you can able to take from there. David said, that word have I hidden in my heart that I may not sin against thee. He said, your word is a lamp to my feet. This is a discipleship program we are designed to meet the needs of every young Christian and even some of others have been in the church for a long time. That we are not have the time to take the Bible. Uh, we are going to take it as a systematic study of the word. So we want you to listen to this broadcast. We will make sure that we all study together. I'm here, I need to learn from you. We may ask for your feedback. So sometimes we may come here and get preached to you, but the purpose of the discipleship program is going to be for us to go the fundamental. Again, let me say that, if I didn't say, if I didn't say it clear, the fundamental for you to understand the word of God, for you to understand what thou said the Lord. One of my greater admirers in the gospel the late Dr. Chris Ware told us in seminary, the power of the preacher lies in thou said the Lord. And when I come here, I'm not going to you human philosophy. It had to come from this word, the written word of God. This is more important. So it's designed for you and myself, for all to learn. I'm learning from it. So today we want to say it again, thank you for turning into us as we started this program. And we want, we want to encourage you to put on your calendar to be able to turn into us every time that we give you the schedule next week when we'll be the regular broadcasting time. Again, this is coming from New Life Fellowship Church, a very dynamic, growing, uh, powerful church, a very, very great Bible teacher we have in the church there. You will learn. Uh, and then our worship service starts at 11 o'clock. A uh, very powerful choir, anointing preacher from your bishop, Bishop Nathan Cotton. Come and worship with us. We are located at 3002 West Ulysses Boulevard, Ulysses, Texas, 76040. Our telephone number is 817 500 2173. God bless you. We'll see you next week.